good morning all of you children today in this class we'll be proceeding further with the chapter first that is solutions for uh, of chemistry of class 12th children in the previous classes we have already learned uh, some of the topics that are the types of solutions we have also learned about the homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures the methods of expressing the concentration also we have covered in the last class now next topic will be starting with with the factors affecting solubility children i have already told you a solution is a homogeneous mixture of a solute and a solvent now we have to study about the factors that affect the solubility of a solute in the solvent now the first factor that affects the solubility of a solute in the solvent is the nature of solute and solvent that means you already know this factor actually that means a polar solute always dissolves in a polar solvent like for example water is a polar solvent it can dissolve all the polar solutes like your nacl nacl is ionic in nature has got two poles the negative pole and the positive pole so it can easily dissolve in water you can say polar dissolves in polar non polar dissolves in non polar now the second factor that affects the solubility of a solute in the solvent is the temperature children the effect of temperature on the solubility is different for different types of solutes and solvent as you all know that we are concerned only about the binary solutions in which the solvent is a liquid then in that case we know that the solute may be solid or liquid or a gas now if suppose we discuss the first factor the first type of liquid solution in which the solute is a solid but the solvent is a liquid in that with the increase in temperature the solubility of the solute the solid solute in the liquid solvent increases why it is increasing because with the increase in temperature the uh, kinetic energy increases now if we talk about the another type of solution that is in which the solute is also a liquid and solvent is also a liquid in that case with the increase in temperature the solubility again increases but if we talk about the third type of solution that we that means in which the solute is a gas but the solvent is a liquid in that case with the increase in temperature solubility decreases that means it is not like uh, the solution of solid and liquid but it is opposite to that why the solubility of a gas in a liquid decreases with temperature there's again a reason related to the kin molecular kinetic molecular theory of gases that you all have learned in standard 11th in standard 11th you all know that with the increase Uh, you all got to know that with the increase in temperature the solubility of a gas in a liquid decreases why because the kinetic energy of the gas molecules increases and they escape out so you must now be able to explain the effect of temperature on this solubility temperature you can say has different effect when the solute is a solid and different when the solute is a gas with the increase in temperature the solubility of a solid solute in a liquid solvent increases but a gaseous solute in a liquid solvent decreases now the third important factor that affects the solubility is the pressure now a solid solute does not have a uh, you can say effective uh, effect of pressure on the solubility there is no such effect but if we talk about a solubility the solubility of a gas in a liquid with the increase in pressure of the gas 
above the liquid the solubility of gas increases now this factor have been explained by henry and is termed as henry's law now so henry's law is related to the solubility of a gas in a liquid the effect of pressure on the solubility of a gas in a liquid see children according to henry's law at constant temperature the solubility of a gas in a liquid is directly proportional to the pressure of the gas above the liquid that means higher the pressure is more will be the solubility now the partial vapor pressure of the gas in vapor phase is directly proportional to the mole fraction this can also be the uh, statement for the same henry's law now you all can see it is written in the mathematical form here that according to henry's law pressure is directly proportional to the mole fraction this x means the mole fraction higher the pressure higher will be the mole fraction of the gas dissolved in the liquid now removing the sign of proportionality this constant kh has come now so uh, we can say now that uh, p that is the pressure of the gas is equal to the henry's law constant kh into k into zeta zeta is the mole fraction of the gas so you all now must be able to explain the effect of uh, pressure on the solubility of a gas in a liquid now next we have to proceed with the applications of henry's law now henry's law the applications are related to your real life now the first application is that to increase the solubility of carbon dioxide in the soda water bottles they are sealed under high pressure of carbon dioxide if the pressure of carbon dioxide is high above the soda water bottle then more amount of that gas will be dissolved in the liquid now the second example the second application you can say is from our body we all inhale the oxygen gas we fill our lungs with the oxygen gas now when the pressure of the oxygen inside our lungs is high then it can easily dissolve in water sorry not water it's blood so when the concentration or you can say the partial pressure of the oxygen is very high inside our lungs then it can easily dissolve in the blood similarly in the body cells where the oxygen has been converted to carbon dioxide the pressure of carbon dioxide is high so it dissolves easily in blood and then brought back to our lungs now the third important application of henry's law is that the deep sea divers they also carry the oxygen cylinder which are diluted with helium in order to increase the solubility now children the next important thing that we have to study about these solutions is the rolls law but before proceeding with the rolls law you all should be uh, knowing what is the meaning of the word vapor pressure now children uh, do you know the meaning of boiling point what is a boiling point children a boiling point you can define as the temperature at which the vapor pressure of the liquid becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure now what is vapor pressure vapor pressure uh, suppose we are having a glass container in that container i've got some liquid any liquid is there inside the container these are the molecules of the liquid i've covered the glass container with the lid now 
even at room temperature if suppose i'm not heating this liquid the evaporation will start that means the molecules which are present on the uh, the surface layer they'll start evaporating now when evaporation will start as the uh, lid is there in the container so the molecules which are converting into the vapor phase they'll uh, collide with the lid or you can say the walls of the container and at the same time condensation will also start now you can say that vapor pressure is that pressure which is exerted by the liquid on the wall of the container or lid of the container when the rate of evaporation becomes equal to the rate of condensation that is evaporation and condensation initially in the beginning only evaporation will take place after a few minutes condensation will also start now a stage will be reached when the rate of evaporation becomes equal to the rate of condensation at this time the pressure of the gas above the liquid in equilibrium with the liquid is termed as the vapor pressure now uh, you all must be uh, now understanding the meaning of boiling point also till now if i'll ask anybody you all will say boiling point is that temperature at which the liquid starts boiling but scientifically how you have to say what is boiling point it is that temperature at which the vapor pressure of the liquid vapor pressure means this pressure of the liquid becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure now now we all can proceed with the next topic that is the rolls law children rolls explained about the solubility in terms of vapor pressure now children suppose we are again having a solution of component a and component b in such a solution suppose now so uh, con this component a is the solvent and component b is the solute and the two are mixed together to the uh, to form a solution a b now in this solution when component a was present in the pure state that means we have not yet mixed the two when component a is present in pure state in that uh, case you all can see and uh, say that the vapor pressure of component a will be very high similarly when component b is present in the pure state then the vapor pressure of component b will also be more now the vapor pressure of a component in its pure state can be written as p not a p not a is the vapor pressure of pure component a in the pure state uh, in the pure state when component b is not mixed similarly vapor pressure of component b in the pure state that means when component a is not mixed in it will be denoted by p not b now when the two are mixed together when component a and component b are mixed together then according to rolls law the partial vapor pressure of component a in the solution this a is written as 1 here the partial vapor pressure of component a in the solution will be directly proportional to the mole fraction of that component in the solution that means pa is directly proportional to zeta a similarly pb is directly proportional to zeta b now according to rolls law if we remove the sign of proportionality then it becomes pa is equal to p not a zeta a and pb is equals to p not b zeta b that means the vapor pressure of a component in its pure sorry the partial vapor pressure of each component in the solution is equal to the vapor pressure of that component in the pure state into its mole fraction in the solution that is the partial vapor pressure this partial vapor pressure of any component in the solution is equal to the vapor pressure of that component in the pure state into its mole fraction 
Is that clear? Okay. Now children, Rolf's law as I told you, P A is equal to P naught A zeta A. Now you can see the figure which is being displayed on the screen. In, figure, in this figure, the first part, that is this part is showing the vapor pressure in the pure state. You all can see on the surface layer, this layer, all the particles are of the same color. That means of a particular solute or you can say solvent. Now, when all the particles present on the surface layer are of the same substance, they all can evaporate and can contribute to the vapor pressure. But if another component is dissolved in it, in that, this figure you all can see, if another component is dissolved in it, then some of the particles which are present on the surface layer are of component A and some are of component B. So, obviously, the pure vapor pressure will always be more and the partial vapor pressure will always be less. This is the pure vapor pressure. This is the pure vapor pressure of any component and this is the partial vapor pressure. This pure vapor pressure will always be more compared to the partial vapor pressure of any component in the solution. Now children, on the basis of the Rolle's law, there are two types of solutions. The first type of solution is the ideal solution. Now, in the next class, we will be proceeding further about uh, in that topic that is ideal solution.